What I want to show you here is the actual translation process. So this is a look at some of the addressing scheme of a packet that would be going from a local area network to the internet and then something, a packet from the internet coming back into the local area network. Now we have some terminology we need to address here. There's four key words. We've got inside, we have outside, we have local, and we have global. And we kind of pair these words together. So we have an inside local address, an inside global address, an outside local address, and an outside global address. The inside versus outside, that refers to who it's referencing. So if it's referencing somebody inside of your network, then that's inside. If it's referencing somebody you know, on the internet, then that would be outside. Now the local versus global is from whose perspective, who's, who's seeing this packet or who it's being seen by, who's, whose perspective. So local is within your little clan, global is outside your clan. So we start with a packet being sent from our local area network, so inside the family. So uh, little slugger there wants to send a, a letter to his Aunt Claire, we'll say. So um, inside of the network, the inside local address is 192.168.10.10. That would be equivalent to little slugger, okay? So that's the inside local address. Now, what happens is that packet is destined for something in the outside world. So the destination address is what's being referred to as the outside local address. It's outside because the, the packet is going outside of the current LAN and it's considered local at this point because it's from the perspective of within the LAN. So the outside local address is really just the destination address, which is 209.165.201.1. So what happens is the packet originates with this IP address and gets sent as it's traversing to the destination address. It gets stopped at the border router. Now the border router is where the translation occurs. So what it's going to do is it's going to translate the inside local address to an inside global address here. So a court like R2 takes the 192.168.10.10 number and now translates it to 209.165.200.226. So the outside world will see that from address as this. So this is now considered the source address. So our packet traverses and it gets to its final destination of 209.165.201.1. That's also considered the outside global address because that's who, what everybody views it as. So it went from 192.168.10.10 as the source address and then at the border router it got translated, the source address got translated from this to this 209.165.200.226 and then it went to its destination. So the same type of translation needs to happen on the way back. So if Aunt Claire is going to send a message back to Little Slugger, its source address is going to be 209.165.201.1. That would be considered the outside global source address because that's where it's originating. Its destination address, Aunt Claire doesn't call Little Slugger Little Slugger. She calls him Jonathan. She calls him by his real name. So when she addresses a letter to him, she doesn't put Little Slugger on it. She puts Jonathan on it. So the sort or the destination address from the perspective of Aunt Claire or the web server is this 209.165.200.226. So the source address is that, and the destination address is the inside global address of this 209 number. When that packet gets to the NAT enabled router, 
it translates this 209-165-200-226 into the 192-168-1010. So in other words, when mom goes to pick up the mail, the envelope says Jonathan on it, but when she goes to give it to Jonathan, she says, hey, little slugger, you got a letter. So the 209-165-200-226 got translated and then sent directly to the inside local address of 192168-1010 so little slugger can open his mail.